Great. Well, thanks very much for your email. That's really helpful. What an very long email. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Autobiography. <laughs> no, it's good. And um, yeah, very helpful, really, because you've had lots of experiences. And how's your son at the moment? How's the clarity there? It's like gone. He's uh, back in the personal mode and it doesn't seem that he knows how to switch back or even maybe he doesn't want to because sometimes he wants to talk um, with me about this. Mm -hmm. But then if I give an advice, he's like getting angry. <laughs> like sure. a typical teenager. <laughs> yeah, well, at that age, there are worldly experiences too, aren't there? So it's yes, reasonable. At least he knows what it is. And uh, well, hopefully... With our conversation, you'll be able to just have one or two little pointers to enable him to, you know, just return when he wants to. Yes, well, yes. it's it's actually not that we return because we're there all along. It's only the delivery of the thoughts which make it appear as though we're not. So yeah, that's uh, the that's the thing that I would like to really see, see clearly. Yes, have you? Um, have you watched any of the recent um, recordings on my channel, Sunny? Yes, over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> well, really, the the this reading your email, my feeling is the simple aspect which just needs to be clarified in your situation is to do with the two delivery systems because. You know, most spirituality makes it seem as though as though there is God and we're sort of flawed beings. But actually, it's slightly different to that. So the the two delivery systems, um, there's one which is real and then there's one which is. Um, well, it's fake, really. And um, that's why Eckhart Tolle said, you know, when Eckhart Tolle realized his true nature, he said, um, he said, well, I was just in a state of total pain. You know, he was in depression, suicidal depression, I think. And then he he said, I can't live with myself anymore. And then he realized that if he couldn't live with himself, there must be two of us. And one of them must be false and the other one is real. And that's actually quite um, clear in terms of um, realization. But it's the, this the secondary delivery system is something which is which is wired to the body mind and it causes all the trouble really because it's a kind of energetic system that we're experiencing and um everything in the world reinforces personalization because it's only in the state of personalization then that that, that energetic compromise can take place um, so let's just have a little look at that. Maybe if we start quite simply and then we'll see where it goes. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so could you um, could you just let me know if there are any thoughts arising at the moment? Well, it's when I shine a light on the thoughts, they disappear. So yeah, that's no, a good... there's a particular thought. But as I feel... Uh, nervousness I guess there are thoughts that produce this feeling of nervousness mm. yeah okay that's fine um so well the next question is to do with emotion so are there any emotions at the moment you mentioned a slight nervousness but um... nervousness excitement slight feeling of joy also good so with the um so with the with the nervousness um or with any emotion or with the joy as well do you feel you're able to be aware of that impersonally do you feel as though you can just kind of rest as an open space of awareness and notice that those frequencies the frequency of joy or the frequency of nervousness are just like waves appearing within this open space of awareness rather than something which is happening to sunny um with feelings it's not so easy i can like kind of observe the thoughts 
Mm -hmm. um, but with the feelings, there is not so much distance. It's really like connected to this body and yeah. Okay. So. Have you used impersonal language? Yes. And do you, could you just do that in this moment though? So um, just using impersonal language to describe say the, well, let's choose the joy really rather than the nervousness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there is an awareness of a slight feeling of joy. Mm -hmm. And there is also an awareness of the body sitting mm -hmm. here and mm -hmm. feeling a bit discomfort. So there is an awareness of discomfort. Okay. Yeah, that's good. And... um. So how does that feel energetically when when you're using impersonal language? Do you notice any difference in terms of the the energy frequency? Because usually it's the personalization and identification which plugs our energy into those emotions. And then it it seems to empower them, really. But by just kind of watching them and also knowing because Part of the conditioning is that everyone has told us that they are our emotions and that they are related to the body. So through that consent, we tend to have the experience in that way. But actually, the the emotions, the emotions are appearing within the emotional body, which is an energetic body. And that's distinct from the physical body. And that also is a field. So it's something we can we can consciously amend because we, the sovereign being, we can just see it in a different way. So when we we just notice, let's just begin by noticing forms arising in this moment. So um, any forms which are just, um, just arising effortlessly. So if we start with thoughts and then we go through emotions and then we can, you know, just notice, notice forms in the room and so just anything arising effortlessly. So if you could you just do that using impersonal language? Or um so just or the light or anything. Well, yeah, beginning begin with thoughts, because this is this is quite a good um thing just to become familiar with because the thoughts tend to run the show to a degree. So if we begin with thoughts, then the mind can settle. So just by just by saying, you know, there is impersonal, effortless, so neutral awareness of thoughts arising. So <laughs> it's the same as before. Like if I think about thoughts, off they go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. So, um, are there thoughts? There is an awareness of the thought that there are no thoughts. <laughs> that that's makes sense. <laughs> yeah, well, you could say that's awareness aware of itself in one way. Okay, great. You could say it because if there's awareness of no thoughts, that's actually non-conceptual awareness. Um, there is an awareness of the light that's in front of me. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a, a ring light, a soft light. Mm -hmm. um, there is an awareness of sounds from my family. Mm -hmm. Great. And there so, is an awareness that the nervousness slightly has gone. Good. So, yeah. That's great. It's softer now. A bit. Great. So just go back to the sense of awareness. So look for thoughts and just see if there is just awareness aware of an open space, because if there's an absence of thoughts, there should be a, a feeling of spaciousness to some degree. Yes, there is an awareness of um, spa spaciousness, but like together with a, a density in the body. Okay. Tension in the body. So it's like both. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's a good description actually, because the um 
the spaciousness relates to the body of wisdom and that's in alignment with with god or the infinite being but the density is something which is part of the energy system because the dualistic realm is uh, it's an energy system effectively so the mental emotional and physical realms um they combine to work as a kind of energy matrix and when we know that it becomes easier just to rest um you know rest as the infinite being because the infinite being is outside that system but it's just that the way the world has conditioned us it's been designed to make us consent to firstly identifying with the thoughts then identifying with the emotions then identifying with the physical body and with the stories but actually we never we never um became any of those things <clears throat> that, that, that by 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 kind of taking on the conditioning in society and the education system which is designed to create all of that you know we're called by name they call the registered school everything you know from day to day is designed to keep us in that mode and we we've kind of consented to it without even realizing but what you just described there which is where there is the simple um awareness of space with no thoughts appearing within it is the simplicity of what you've always remained as it's just the habit of adopting the forms um believing that they're related to us in some way is only a habit it isn't true so just um yeah just so if we just um, notice one or two more things but then um because language is it's kind of casting a spell of limitation so using words like i and me and mine there it's consenting not only to the form appearing so if there's nervousness so if we say i feel nervous it's it's consenting on two levels it's, so it's consenting firstly to the idea that the the nervousness is ours and it's also consenting to the idea that we're existing in the personal realm to be able to take delivery of that but neither of those are true because you just remain as the open space and then these forms appear as invitations so the the body mind is is like a virtual reality interface you know we we kind of look through the eyes and you know with some of the experiences you describe you're familiar with most of this really it's just that the the ability to um allow the kind of unwinding of consent which has been there for a while um that that can just happen sometimes it takes a little while you know for i think because for you you've had lots of experiences so there isn't really anything that comes in that is new it's just that there there are still kind of remnants of the personal mode um which are just kind of showing up because you've kind of consented to the conditioning the sort of consensus reality and also i think you know the way you describe your um your life situation it sounds quite a busy home environment <laughs> and so yes. that, that also is um is especially with younger people it's um it's kind of designed to draw you into the personal mode because they're speaking to you as though you're a human being in time and space and lots of the concerns and preoccupations are to do with identification with with individuality so lots of the responses even though you're kind of witnessing them to some degree you're having to bat them off quite a lot through the day i would guess <laughs> yes and in day-to-day -day life it's like um you are not then calm enough to to be aware of something or to like like get a distance that so you are just occupied and within this movie story yes um, yeah the solution though is slightly different to the way we've been conditioned because the the way we've been conditioned is to believe that we need some kind of practice to establish a state yes 
but that isn't the case really because when we see that when we see that our infinite nature predominates and it's actually there prior to the arising of the mind or the emotions or the physical realm then we realize there isn't any battle to get anywhere so we don't need to be practicing to try to maintain a state and just the knowing of that creates a sense of lightness because you realize well i don't need to try to get back anywhere because i'm already there it's just that there's been a tendency to entertain certain concepts of limitation and have the implications you know energetically and emotionally in that sense but it just becomes much lighter and i think that knowing that probably on a practical level um having that sense of ease and lightness and um and joy in your daily experience is really the solution far more than um trying to maintain any spiritual practices because your even though your life is really busy it sounds in many ways very rich you know that you have you know a lovely family around you and everything about your life is you know sounds great um obviously one or two little challenges here and there but but the the general thing is is that um everything is working out for you in a way the the intelligence coming through from your infinite nature is already ca caring you know for you in a very um loving way and also the um the the kind of discernment and um, clarity that there is in terms of realization is also there. So really it's just seeing those things in combination that, uh, because really someone, um, well, th this is true of everyone really, and you may have heard me say this before, but the, um, the way the dualistic energy system works is, it tends to deliver thoughts which are designed to um, create an experience or get us to believe in the opposite of what is true. So it's designed to make it look as though there's something missing and mm -hmm. there's something lacking and that there's some practice needed to do something. When really all that's required is to just stop listening to those thoughts because they're not ours. <laughs> Yeah, it's not so easy though, or it it seems not to be so easy when when the mind is so seems to be so strong, um, and appears to be so strong. Well, the the um, it's amazing the way it works. So, are you familiar with you know? I've spoken more recently um, about the Gnostic version about the demiurge. Are you familiar mm -hmm. with it? Yeah, from you, yes. Yeah, good. So the the way so the way the delivery system works is that it is it's kind of watching everything that's going on so even um even the delivery of that thought so you know i was saying that actually you're already there and everything is already perfect and and really acknowledging you know the sense of enrichment and joy that is there for you already um is the key aspect because by you know maintaining that um feeling um of lightness just um enables you to remain functioning from effortless being much more easily than taking delivery of the invitations and because we were talking along those lines that actually it's already complete the ingenious delivery which came from the dualistic source said well actually it's not so easy yes and that, so it, but it was that was delivered into the mind as an invitation but because we're so familiar with taking delivery and they're so ingenious and they're designed to kind of respond very, very specifically to the topic of conversation then you can see how easy it is to be drawn into that dualistic matrix where we're taking delivery and then the there's an energetic um component to that because the truth is um even in the human sense you have a very expansive um life experience and you know so many wonderful aspects to your life experience um but the 
which really should all of that really um should result in a sense of expansion and um joy infinite possibilities you know creativity which comes through which is obviously there for you and um and also um being able to you know help your children in whatever way you can you know and i'm sure you're doing that already but i think that with the um the seeing of the way the delivery system works in a you know a very sort of focused way where you're you're kind of alert to the possibilities and then you see them coming in you realize that the the mind is like a little adoption agency except we don't you know we don't realize that we because the thoughts are being delivered and then we're instantaneously adopting them without shining a light on them and looking at them and saying well actually not only is that not true but also it's creating a sense of contraction because if you if a thought is delivered and it's saying well it's not so easy when we voice that it actually maybe only on a subtle level but it does give a feeling of contraction and it also it it gives a sense of um a requirement for uh practice and to actually arrive at something in the future it's the yeah. idea it's not so easy so the implication there is it's saying well Sonny, really, you need to work a bit harder. You, you know, you're not doing enough. <laughs> I have to practice more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so just being alert to those, because you can. The truth is, you're already the sovereign, infinite, timeless being, and you're just having this little te tennis match with the demiurge. The demiurge is batting little thoughts into the body mind, and then you know you can you know you can either um turn it into a battle um or you can just have a bit of fun with it and you just bat it back over the net and how can i have fun with it instead of battling with it well it's really looking it's really looking at it in a way um where you see it more lightly because one of the invitations is to do with a sense of gravity that, well, actually, this is a very serious thing you're dealing with here. And, you know, most people never succeed in overcoming this. Um, so, you know, I might have to work hard for the rest of my life. In fact, you know, a lot of Buddhists say you have to do it for thousands of lifetimes to get anywhere. But actually, it is, um, it, it's really just a bit of fun. And, um, and seeing the predictability of the invitations it is a bit like um it, it's a bit like um looking after a child because um if you have no experience of looking after a child and somebody says oh will you look after my son for an hour while i go shopping and you've never done it before you know then it could be quite daunting and and that's really how it feels in terms of the dualistic realm even to begin with when you recognize that there is this secondary um, delivery system in operation. But as it is with um, the way you would handle children, there would be a sense of ease. You would know exactly what to say in any circumstances so that you, you know, they, they kind of um, make things seem as dramatic as possible to get your attention. But you know how to avert that by just lightening it or diverting their attention to something else and it's very much like that with the demiurge because the demiurge is just trying to buy for your attention it wants your energy and attention in a way a child does and it does it in the most dramatic way so it's trying to deliver invitations which seem as though you know it's really difficult um but it's like you know it's like a a child and you you know you buy them a little plastic monster for christmas and, you know, they say, oh, this is really scary. You know, they're really frightened of it. And they oh, I'm very frightened of this. But, you know, you're not frightened of it. So, you know, you just sort of downplay it and you just see it for what it is. And it's it's really handling it in that way because you're you're the sovereign being. And the the game really in the dualistic realm is only <clears throat> ultimately a bit of entertainment because 
you know, you've probably spent eons, you know, in the angelic realms and got a bit bored with that. And so you thought, well, I'll just go down there for a while. <laughs> and um, so, so really, uh, because you're sovereign, it's it's realizing you can exercise sovereignty in any aspect of your experience. So anything, you know, so if there's a thought being delivered, which is saying, well, it's not so easy. Like, I would never consent to anything like that. I would just, you know, it's it's like having a little boy coming up saying, I'm going to beat you up. You know, <laughs> Try that. <laughs> <laughs> so. So. That's, you know, I, I feel there's an aspect of that, really, because you've had um, your life's been pretty full on, hasn't it? So, you know, in many <laughs> yes, <ways. laughs> definitely. And so. So um, the intensity, it, it's as though the intensity has moved from one situation to another. And mm -hmm. um, so. It's like an it's like a frequency of intensity in in some ways because because you're the sovereign being, um, you have um, there's a sort of predominant frequency which is to do with intensity of experience in one way or another in really in a really nice way, but also in quite a demanding way as well, and um, because um, on some level you've consented to that you've kind of said, well, this is how life is. It's intense and it's quite um, quite challenging. Then it's the circumstances have changed, but the frequency has continued. And um, but because you're the sovereign being, you can actually change that. And you don't need to try to do it, you know, overnight, but just, um, you know, just gradually you'll you'll be able to you'll be able to do that because it's um it's something that you realize that you know say there's i would say for you there's probably only a small percentage of energy which is um supporting the dualistic realm anyway um would you would you hazard a guess at the degree to which your energy is um that depends. Sometimes it's like like feeling as if I'm feeding the monster with everything I have. And, and sometimes it feels lighter. Yeah. Depends. Yeah. What sort of circumstances would give that sense of gravity? Is it a sense of overwhelm? Is it if you're kind of bombarded sometimes? So, because if you have quite a few people around you demanding on your attention. It's... Um, for example, doing something with uh, like like household, that is quite mm. frustrating for me. The way I have to do it. Yes. Um, so and there is also much anger um, coming up, and oh, I have to do this again, and I don't mm. want to, and things like that. Mm. So there is this. Surely is um, there are a lot of inv invitations regarding to this, mm. for example. Yes. Well, regarding the anger, for instance, um, that can, you know, that's quite a powerful one in one way because it's, you know, it's quite a ferocious kind of energy. Yes. And um, but but the solution really in terms of anger is in, well, there are two solutions, really, two possibilities. The one is in knowing that by taking delivery of those invitations, it's compromising your energy you know, to quite a high degree, which is why you say, you know, sometimes there's a feeling of, um, you know, intensity. Um, so there, there's great incentive in identifying the, the, the kind of triggers for those invitations and deciding beforehand that you won't do that. Because um, I think one of the things with, um, with your experience is, some of the invitations could be to do with the lack of time you know the idea that you don't have time to do everything you need to do mm -hmm. which you know with the family that's you know that's certainly an aspect of it but um you can change that by um you know by approaching things in a slightly different way because the 
the invitations into things like anger or a feeling of not having enough time they tend to they tend to keep us energetically preoccupied and so the solution sometimes is just to demonstrate that you do have time so doing things which um turn that around um like with my brother for instance he he worked he had a business for years and he was always totally busy he never had any rest or anything and then he had a, an issue with his knee and um, so he couldn't work and he said well you know I don't, really don't know what I'm going to do I think my business is going to collapse and you know we're going to be in terrible trouble and I said well let's have a look so we kind of reviewed his situation and um, he we, we looked at everything like his banking and everything and liabilities and what became apparent is the most expensive aspect of his of his life really was the business so he was really working to support this monster <laughs> yes. and, um, so so it was quite dramatic in a way but we i just said well you know just really simplify things in your life and and make every day as joyful as it can possibly be so you begin to you begin to kind of devise the day where it's serving you rather than feeling you're subject to it and and that you have to um comply with all of the demands and um so you know his phone was always ringing he never had any space um and then so we sat down and said well you know what is it you like to do and they said oh well we like to you know go to nice environments to the coast or we like to visit stately homes or go to a garden center or just you know go for coffee just sim really simple things and um so they started to plan their days you know before it was having a list of all the jobs to do and being like a slave but the, he and his wife started to just um divide the day up in a way where it was to do with a sense of ease and joy and lightness and um, obviously responsibility like they have a little dog so they take their dog with them and they really enjoy that but when um, when you kind of turn things around in that way when you're consciously devising the day to be as joyful as possible for everyone you know but especially for you for yourself initially you find that other people around you will pick up on that and it, it it has a kind of energetic impact on them so so that's on a practical level that's something that that can be done and i i, I had a similar experience years ago um when i left the meditation community i lived in and you know i had quite a challenging time financially um but it resolved in a way that was quite different to the sort of conventional way so the conventional way is you know to do with hard work and overexertion. but i decided not to do that I, I decided to do exactly what i've just described which is to make the day as delightful as possible so you know doing some meditation and doing um you know doing some work maybe for four or five hours a day um and so you just allocate an amount of time you know if you have responsibilities obviously with the family there are things that need to be done but allocating a certain amount of time to do those things and then also giving time to do other things and um so rather than rather than being bound by the um you know the sort of conventional approach to things which is to do with hard work there was um you know just devising things to be as light and delightful as possible and what actually happened is the the house i was um kind of improving um it took much longer it took 18 months whereas it, like through exertion i could have got it done maybe in six months uh, but what actually happened is the value of the house doubled in that time and that was um that was like effortless being demonstrating that you know by functioning from your sovereignty rather than from a sense of being hurried and under pressure 
is definitely the way to go. And in every aspect of life, you can exercise that. And you find the more you do that, then the more time there is. Because you're the infinite being and you're shining the light of your infinite potential through whatever the filter is. So if the filter is to do with overexertion or being overburdened, for instance, then we we activate whatever that frequency is because you're the infinite being so it isn't that it isn't that it's necessary to be overburdened what you find is when you reclaim your sovereignty and you begin to call the shots as to how things need to be you find that time seems to appear um and things get organized behind the scenes the intelligence which is coming from your infinite nature will organize things um, without you even having to think about them but because we've been conditioned into mind predominance it's the idea that we have to take responsibility we're burdened with all of this yes content and and then when we're taking responsibility of it with the mind we're in the energy system and it's draining and you can sense it's really easy to sense which system you're serving because the one feels light and the one has a sense of things just coming in from nowhere to support you. And the other one has a sense of contraction and of, you know, pressure and being overburdened. And, um, you know, maybe not to shift it immediately, but certainly, um, you know, making the decision to, to to work in that way is um is something that you can you know you can just play with that just to see how it um it transforms things and because it's um because you're at the head of your household with your children they're tuning in telepathically to you as well and so the more sense of ease timelessness and lightness that you're demonstrating then the more they will feel that so that will give them a sense of ease and peace and also you know their infinite nature will become more well it comes to the foreground more in their own experience as a result of that but for you there isn't really anything missing it's um it is already there it's it is only just the residue of the of the invitations and the you can really just turn the volume down on them because you're the sovereign being <laughs> yeah i'm still trying to um yeah trying to um yeah it's it's the funny thing that this is this kind of oh i know it intellectually which is completely nonsense um but um i don't see it yet <laughs> That's the mind just telling me this, yeah. Yeah, the mind's just telling you because, well, let's just look at a simple distinction between forms arising effortlessly and then the mind. And I'm sure you've seen this demonstrated so many times, but let's just have a look at this because it is just, um, it's quite a simple overlooking really that's taking place because there isn't anything missing. There is already functioning from your infinite nature and realization of the infinite self it's just that the the um the dualistic delivery system because it's so adept at um kind of um moderating or amending the delivery to either put a roadblock into your experience or to create a sense of contraction it's just inge so ingenious at doing that but if let's just have a look at the at a moment just to see because when you see do you sense that that um there is clarity in terms of resting as effortless being in this moment can you is there a sense that the awareness you know when i was saying about um thoughts and you said, well, actually, there aren't any. There's, there is just awareness of no thoughts. So that's really awareness of awareness.
I'm just trying to grasp it. It's just still the mind trying to grasp. Um, yeah. That's what the mind's telling you, but yeah, 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 that's right. Because your true nature is completely effortless. It's it's the awareness which is just the effortless, neutral, impersonal awareness, which is right here in this moment, is just resting eternally. And then there are forms arising within that. So there isn't, there's nothing required to get there because it's the only place you can be. So there is really only, the, there are the changing forms arising within it, but the effortless awareness is just totally established and inescapable. Um, as I have written in the email, I had something like an NDE where I was um, in in black infinite ocean of nothingness and peace, mm -hmm. um, which is known as the void. As I learned later, yeah, is this the infinite? Is this the infinite being? Is this the field that is that you are also talking about? The the infinite field. Of awareness and well it, there are there are a couple of ways of looking at it so um have you well let's just go through this little exercise to do with um attribute this being because that can clarify things because what can happen is um the sense of awareness which can just be like a black open space within which there is a sense of awareness and existence in itself if that is just totally peaceful and still and neutral that is the infinite being but if that um experience because that um anything which has um qualities is an experience so so if there's a sense of existence or if if there is um you know something um where you, where it has a particular quality there's then the possibility of the mind coming in and trying to hijack that to put you into fear so it could say oh well it's just this blackness you know you might just stay here forever you might not be able to you know return to your personal experience it can you know it can do all those things but because you're because you're the infinite being and the infinite being is a field of infinite potential, then you're always actually carrying the potential which is just there innately. But temporarily, um, if we're not proficient at spotting the delivery of invitations, we can take delivery of something which is trying to say, oh, this is scary, or I might get lost here, or I've got to claw my way back or something. And... Um, with um you know with different um you know psychedelics and things they can do that because the, the you know the there can be there can be a very innocent um experience but then suddenly the the energetic system comes in and uses it in a, as an opportunity to put people into terror or something and um and so so there's a confusion between the two aspects of the experience. So the simplicity and purity of the experience, which is often there initially, where there's some sort of, um, you know, substance being used, then, um, you know, that's okay. But if, if there isn't an understanding of the way the dualistic system works and that it's an energy system designed to put us into mental and emotional compromise then those invitations um substances can give a kind of turbocharged um delivery of invitations and um and so that can that can leave a kind of residue in a way because it's like um the well there's um there's a passage in the bible which is about the the wedding is it the wedding feast i think or something but it's the idea that if you're going to some kind of occasion that you need to show up in the right clothing and the analogy is that if if we 
if we have experiences with things like you know drugs or alcohol that we we're not really in the correct attire so the 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 nervous system isn't necessarily stable enough to be able to have those experiences without them being hijacked yes um, so that can then that can then create a kind of groove um which is remembered so it can the the invitation if it's quite intense you know so when people have a bad trip on something um that can leave like um it's like a delivery system which is quite a deep groove and then there can be the delivery of a similar experience later i had this in uh, in the beginning of our conversation suddenly i had this feeling of fear i hadn't i hadn't had this um for a long time now but it was the same suddenly the same fear was coming up coming up um as it was then like the fear of losing control and the fear of yeah losing control i think it was the same experience the same fear when i when i took the mushrooms yes i'm 17 um where i suddenly like dissolved and it was losing control and yes I, and uh yeah my mind tries to stay in control yes and so and now it yeah and it, it has delivered the fear the exact same fear that's very interesting you know the reason for that though sunny yeah it's because i was just like so i was opening up and i had the feeling of getting it in a way and then the mind came in and just delivered the fear and i was like oh no um i have to be careful because something mm. can happen and yeah yeah something that's... uncomfortable or i could lose control or something yeah. yeah that's exactly it but it's because it's because the dualistic energy system which has been you know having some influence saw that actually realization um was available so it's it's there it was like the panic button was hit yes. where it was saying it oh was dread a, <laughs> a little alarm which went off and said hang on we don't want to lose sunny yes <laughs> you know so, back. <laughs> yeah, so it tries to pull you back yes but it's knowing that it's knowing that all of the ammunition in the dualistic system is based on falsehood because the truth is you are already the infinite being what the dualistic system does it inverts things to make it seem as though you're stable when you're um, hooked up to the dualistic system and if you let go of it then it's going to get really scary yes. <laughs> but the truth is that you're already the only place you can ever be is in your infinite nature that in this moment you're actually just resting as the infinite being that's all you can ever be and so the delivery of the invitations they they deliver a kind of inverted version to try to see to try to convince you to see things upside down to make it seem as though the power is in the dualistic system when actually all the power is in your true nature it's telling me as if it was dangerous to go home which is completely stupid <laughs> yeah well even even that's quite an ingenious delivery because it's the idea that you need to go home because you are already home yes you can't be anywhere else and it isn't scary because you're you know you're just there Still, I'm desperately waiting for for coming home. Well, let's have a look at that little sentence there. Yes. So there's one little letter in there, which is I, which yes. is being delivered to try to make it seem as though you as an individual need to go home. But actually, you're the infinite being. You're the infinite I, the I of the I am you know, using that pointer, but you're already home. 
and there is nowhere to go because you're already there. But it's only the distinction between realization and someone who believes they need to go home or get home is only the difference between whether we're actually believing the delivery system, which is trying to convince you that you need to go home because you're already there. It's a form of, it's like hypnosis. It's like somebody, you know, somebody telling you, you're like, you're, you're already home, you're sat on the sofa and um, the delivery system is saying you need to get home. You know, it's dangerous to stay here. You need to get home as quickly as you can. And then there's this frantic search to get home. And it gets you running round and round the sofa. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then you just sit down and you realise you've always been home. But it's the energy, it's... It's just that energetic aspect of the invitation. Um, and because, you, because you've had one or two experiences to do with psychedelics, um, they can be, you know, trying to deliver something. But the, 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 only, way, the only way that they can still have an effect is if you take the delivery of them on a personal level. But actually just resting as the infinite being, then it is impossible to take delivery of them. So just seeing, just seeing the forms arising in this moment. So just notice, are there any thoughts appearing? No, <laughs> or there's again, this emptiness. Yeah, that's good. There are always thoughts in between, but as soon as I want to grasp the thoughts, it's like gone. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, so are there, are there any emotions at the moment? Yes, yeah, still this slight nervousness. Okay, let's use impersonal language there then. Just say, so just there is there is impersonal awareness of a slight frequency of nervousness. There is an impersonal awareness of a slight feeling of nervousness. Which is arising, arising in, yes. in the infinite ocean of being which I've always been. Oh, which is arising in the infinite ocean. Yeah. Still still more of a concept than of an understanding. Because I you um I yeah, I use um impersonal language throughout the day quite often. Mm -hmm. Um and sometimes there seems to be understanding, but often there's still this conceptualizing. So you see, it's, it's still the mind is so still occupying. Well, you know, with the um, with the conceptualizing, it's the thing that you noted earlier, actually, which you mentioned in the conversation, which is the idea that you get it intellectually, but you don't know it directly, is one of the the common ones, really, because um, you know, people say, "Oh, I don't know what awareness is," but Awareness is just this open space within which, uh, you know, whatever forms arise. And you have to be fully present as infinite awareness for there to be awareness of anything. But the mind is delivering a thought saying, oh, I understand it intellectually, but I don't really know it directly. But the only thing that's ever knowing anything is infinite, impersonal, effortless awareness. So it's that's already the foundation of all experience. You know, that needs to be there before the arising of any thoughts. And the thoughts aren't even, the thoughts really don't have any power. The thoughts are like little bubbles in this open space of awareness, but they're pretending that they're very important. Yeah, they're inflating themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like <moon. laughs> yeah. 
yeah sometimes i can i can feel the distance um yeah to the thoughts or to the body or to the feelings that has changed within the last months that mm. there are moments where i can yeah dismantle it or mm. yeah. and also um another aspect really which you just described is um is the idea that for you to be present in your infinite nature there needs to be a feeling of space or peace mm -hmm. that's a concept as well right that's yeah that because the experiences come and go but you the infinite being are present throughout so even so even when there's an experience of an invitation it's still being known by the infinite effortless being so so there isn't there isn't anything to stabilize experientially that's one of the last dominoes to fall really the idea that we need to stabilize an experience but there is there is no experience to stabilize because the freedom is in knowing that you are already existing in your full infinite nature so you're not perturbed by the coming and going of you know different experiences it doesn't matter if it's you know it could be a sense of peace or silence or or it could be something else you know and and um it doesn't need to it doesn't need to there doesn't need to be any state that's established because the freedom is there the way it actually works is the freedom which is already there is seen to be not disturbed by the thoughts it's only we've consented to the idea that the thoughts are disturbing us when they're not the your infinite nature is always fully there and um so therefore it doesn't really matter what's coming and going you know so there could be you know there could be um easy experiences or difficult experiences and um and so you know there can be, be a belief in there being particular experiences which are disturbing for instance you know most people consider things like you know death or illness or accidents or those kinds of things to be disturbing but they're only disturbing in the personal realm because just resting as the infinite being and realizing that you just rest as the infinite being everyone around you only ever rests as the infinite being then it just isn't um it isn't necessary to, to subscribe to that version of experience because that's that's a kind of consensus version which is um that's the demiurgic version really because it's the idea that there are these really scary things that can happen to us but the more you notice that the awareness you've always been is just ever present it isn't affected by anything it doesn't come and go there's nothing in terms of the content that can disturb you then you don't bother anymore because it's like you're the ocean and there could be these little waves which come along but the ocean doesn't need to be frightened of the waves so what is frightened of of the waves because there is something that is frightened there is something that is afraid or feels fear or or buys into it yeah well that's that's really all it is it's like you know as i've mentioned in some of the recordings it's like a ride you know there can be you know there's the ghost train at the fair and you know if you get on the ghost train it's going to be trying to frighten you and it's the same with it's, it's the same with the mind the mind is like a theme park and you know there are these various options you know there can be fear and doubt and jealousy and depression and all of these different experiences available and um when we you know firstly 
well it's the way we kind of venture into the dualistic realm you know we kind of venture in in quite an innocent way because we're not aware of the implications of it so we get involved in the dualistic realm and then you know we're not told that the the way the koshas emerge they emerge in a sequence from subtle to gross so initially we're experiencing in infinite bliss and then in the body of wisdom we're experiencing all forms arising equally and effortlessly and then when we venture into the mental realm which we venture into quite innocently innocently really through i've, I've mentioned before you may have heard me say it's a, a sequence the sort of three stages of comparison preference and then conflict the three steps to conflict <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> that you could probably write a song around that. <laughs> yeah. um and then so once we've so once we've stepped into there so you go you know you go from comparison into preference and then conflict and then you're invested in that dualistic aspect of the experience and then once you're invested in the mind then we're we're then invited into the next level which is the emotional level because um in the astral realm we we're experiencing on a mental level but we're not experiencing on the emotional level but in the etheric realm we're experiencing in the two and then in the physical realm we're experiencing in the three so not only is there the mental um dualistic realm there is then the kind of expression of that um, the turbulence and the rising and falling of the emotions in response to the thoughts mainly and then there's the physiological response which is on from there so it's it's like these three stages which we've consented to and the the consenting is something which we've done without even realizing but because the dualistic realm is designed to maintain that aspect of consent then we don't actually stop to notice that we've never entered it that we've actually remained in our infinite nature all along and they're only they're only options you know they're rides they're like little thrills so in reality there is a choice it just doesn't feel like a choice until you realize that it's just a choice or you re you self realize and then you you clearly see that you have options that you have a choice that you don't have to buy into it well let's just have a look at a simple option in this moment which you may be familiar with but let's just see to see uh, you know if there's anything which just needs a bit of fine tuning but just um just noticing something arising in this moment so is there is there anything fairly constant? I can hear my son talking, but it's not so constant. Okay. Well, let's change the language there. Because there, there is an awareness um, of my son talking. Not even your son. Hmm? There is a, it, it's in, in, per, in impersonal language, it would be better just to say, there is awareness of the sound of talking or there's mm -hmm. awareness of the sound of a teenager talking because when we say i or me or mine we're consenting to the personal so there's the identification there yeah so there is an awareness of voices of sounds from the kitchen yeah cooking sounds okay are they fairly are the cooking sounds fairly constant at the moment yes good let's use that i've not used that example before cooking sounds. <laughs> okay <laughs> so 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 just be effortlessly aware of the of that's the sound of the cooking so it just has a particular frequency. There's a sense of 
well just effortlessness really so it's just effortless awareness of that specific sound so the only place that can be known is in effortless being which is impersonal it's neutral it's non-conceptual there's no disturbance in terms of mind or emotions there is just the simple noticing of that sound no judgment no judgment either no it's just there it's just simply uh, there now yeah. my now the dog is trying to to come in <laughs> okay so he interrupted that now um so there was an uh, there's an awareness of the dog trying to get into the room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so do you want to let the dog in? No, no, it's, it's okay, okay because otherwise he will be barking and yeah. Sure. Okay. So so you saw that though, Sonny, didn't you? You just saw the simplicity of the impersonal effortless awareness for the sound of the cooking. Yes. So is there another example? Is there some is there another sound or shall we just stay with the cooking? I think uh they are finished with cooking. <laughs> <laughs> um I don't know how to say impersonal my husband, but uh <laughs> the man in the kitchen. <laughs> well you can say the husband. The infinite being in the kitchen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's finished cooking <laughs> um and um there is an awareness of the two infinite beings now uh sitting at the table and okay. talking <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's good so um is there any light in yes. the room yes is there is an awareness of light in front of me Okay. In front of this infinite being. <laughs> You're beginning to take the mickey now. <laughs> um, so let's just take the light then. So um, so just notice the light. So just notice there is effortless awareness of the light. There isn't anything that Sonny needs to do to make the light shine or... So it's just the simplest form of awareness. It's awareness aware of light. So just being effortlessly aware, remaining neutral, noticing that there is awareness which doesn't require Sunny to be present to be aware of the light because it's the it's infinite awareness which is aware of the light and there is there's the option for personalization but you don't need to exercise that option in this moment you can just remain in your infinite nature which is neutral effortless awareness and there is neutral effortless awareness of the light and there's neutral effortless awareness of the computer screen, neutral effortless awareness of the objects in the room. There's neutral effortless awareness of the two voices. And they're both arising as waves on the same ocean of awareness. So we've been told the one belongs to Sonny and the other one belongs to David, but actually they're like waves arising on the same ocean because there is only the one ocean. And if we just take the example of the light, then there is just the noticing of the light that's just arising effortlessly. And then you could just describe it. So to describe the light, it's necessary to move from the body of wisdom, from effortless being, which is impersonal, into the mental body, and then to describe it. So should I describe it now? Yes, please. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, yeah, it's a ring light with a soft yellow tone um, that is in front of me. Mm -hmm. Good. So you can see the distinction there. You Can you see the distinction between Slightly. effortlessness and effort? Mm -hmm. um, so the noticing of the light is effortless. It's, um, there was a time when it was effort to be effortless aware. <laughs> like it felt like effort. Sure. So that within the last, I think, days, maybe several weeks, this has, um, yeah, it's becoming more effortless to be effortlessly aware, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. So, well, we're habituated to effort, aren't we? So it's understandable yeah. in a way. Because I have done this exercise many times um, following your conversations. Mm. And there was a time when I thought it's just so much effort to just to just be aware of the light or be aware of sounds because mm. there also was a, a density in the in the body. So it's like contraction, effort. Yeah. Yes. So. so the yeah, so there was a delivery of invitations really accompanying that. Yes. But as we just did that, did you, I mean, obviously there's an element of attention, so you could say, well, it isn't totally effortless, but certainly the distinction between the simple noticing of the forms and then the the the, the engagement of the mind to describe them. Yes, so, I can, yes, I can see the distinction now yeah. much clearer than it was. Sure like a few weeks ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when you asked the question a few moments ago, is there an option? That's the option. The option is in that distinction. Because it takes no effort to be, you know, just resting as effort is being takes no effort. It takes more effort to be sunny. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but individuality is optional, uh, optional as well. You know, with the family, there are certain parts, you know, you have a, you know, you're called to play the role, you know, or to, you know, to play that part at various times of, of, of the day. But, um, but actually all the time you're resting as effort is being. And it's just that, at times you have to assume the role as the character you know you're you remain always in your true infinite nature but then you're called on sometimes you know usually by family members and they you know they say oh mom can you do this for us or um and then you have to step in the role and pretend that you are sunny but you never became sunny sunny is just there was a little, before you arrived on the earth plane, there was a list of little jobs um, and little character roles. And you said, oh, I'll take that one, please. <laughs> and so how can I decline this? Because, um, yeah, I'm a bit exhausted playing this character. Mm. Or maybe Sunny feels exhausted playing herself. <laughs> I don't know how to put it. Um, yeah, well, it, or the mind you... is exhausted to have uh, being in 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 charge. Yes, that's more accurate, really, because the anything which requires effort and anything which is giving rise to a sense of exhaustion is taking place in the dualistic realm, because your infinite nature is never exhausted. So even with even with something like tiredness or exhaustion, we've been conditioned to believe, oh, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I feel exhausted. But there's there's just simple, neutral, impersonal awareness of an experience called exhaustion. 
but you're not exhausted because you're you're the infinite being it's just that the invitations into identification with personalization um we you know we we add that sense of personalization to that wave which is just a frequency and and then we put them together and we say oh, i'm exhausted but they're actually distinct there's the one which is the character role and then the other one which is the frequency which is like the wave arising in your infinite nature and then we kind of put them together and make it seem as though they relate to each other when they never have yeah, i can see it a bit cl more clearly now that there is a yeah a separation or that not separation but that there are like two different modes yes okay great yeah that's the first time good <laughs> still not this aha moment but now i can see it. yeah i can see the, the difference yes so you could did you see that in relation to the sense of exhaustion did you see that on some level there'd been a consenting without even noticing to the idea that you're exhausted when actually exhaustion is it's just happening it's a, yeah it's a characteristic it's just a quality which is arising in awareness there is awareness of there is impersonal awareness of a sense of exhaustion and then you know it's like you have these two aspects so there's there's sunny in the one hand and then there's the exhaustion in the other and they they're not actually related to each other but you put them together excuse me you put them together <laughs> and, and say oh i'm exhausted but actually they don't relate to each other yes and i can also see a bit like the character sunny that is playing being exhausted and that there is something that is not touched by it at all fantastic that's exactly it and that's the option yes okay and it's quite interesting that um the mind so ingenious the way it came in instantaneously with the thought well i haven't had an aha moment yet yes <laughs> Still not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the simplicity of it. That is that is realization and it's actually very subtle. It's just that subtle distinction. It's just that the clarity in seeing the difference between the open effortless space of awareness, which is simply aware of forms arising, and that form could be tiredness or exhaustion. Um, and then the conditioned mode of adopting that and attaching it to Sunny to make it seem as though they're in the same space when they never were. Yeah, and I can see now that there is this is not the same space. Before it was all like mingled together, and now I can see that that there are different spaces. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. is there a sense of silence yes yes there is a quietness great Yeah, at the moment, it's like the head is empty. <laughs> <laughs> Can you apply it to another form? So are there any other feelings? So is there any, is there a feeling of joy? Slightly. Okay. And... Um... Yeah, slight, slight feeling of excitement or, yeah, joy. Great. 
but so more you... yes more like silence and and peace like something has smoothed out right that's the demiurge he's just packed his bag bags and... <laughs> Bye. <laughs> off it goes <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's really the um, it, it's really the subtlety of just seeing that there is this space which is your true nature, this open space of awareness, which is like a field or an ocean of awareness, and then these forms can appear. So the it's always only impersonal awareness which is aware. So there is impersonal awareness of a slight subtle sense of joy or lightness, and they're just appearing in this ocean of silence. And because of the, the conditioning, it made it seem as though there was this personalized component to experience, which had been called sunny, and that sunny was an essential part of experience, and that Sunny needed to be present, you know, to have experiences. And then you see, well, actually, what is knowing everything is impersonal. And there's it's just an open space within which the forms appear. And there is there is effortless awareness of the body mind of Sunny sitting on the seat. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what to say now. It's just like so empty. There are thoughts coming up. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, without Sunny, without the experience, without Sunny having the experiences, that would be quite boring. <laughs> like, thoughts like that are coming up now. Which are just invitations. You can see they're quite predictable, really. They're trying to hook you back in. Yes. But once you've seen that Sunny isn't required to be part of the equation, then you can see that the clarity of resting as effortless impersonal being, and then whatever the, the forms are arising within that, they just arise effortlessly. There isn't anything you need to do to make them arise. There isn't any intervention on the personal level that's required. And it's knowing that energetically that's the best place to be because the emotions settle, the mind settles, and then this space emerges where um, the delivery from your infinite nature becomes much more clear then. Yes, I can feel the lightness. I feel like in a meditative state now <laughs> for the really first time that it's like really feeling like a meditative state without without many things going on and the mind like constantly chattering. Mm -hmm. Cool. It's <laughs> <laughs> great. Do you feel you'll be able to relocate that, you know, because if you get busy, can you, because once it's, the thing is, once it's seen in that way, you can't go back to not seeing it in reality. Because it's, the way you describe it is, it's a description of effortlessness in a way, because the effort was implied through the motion of the thoughts and emotions, when actually where there's the silence, you can see that it is really effortless. I don't know if I, if, because it is so subtle, I don't know if in, in day to day life, um, I can, I don't know, realize yeah, you, that. But 
you don't I think in quiet moments yes uh, I will yeah well you don't you don't need to try to maintain it that can be another invitation really mm -hmm. um but it's knowing it's just knowing what you are you know when there when there is a, a sense of personalization um a sense of awareness and then forms appearing and we put those three things together it creates a sense of personalized experience but what you've seen is that the forms can be known impersonally so it's simply always impersonal awareness which is aware of the arising of the forms and you can assume personalization so you know if your husband or you know children or anyone you know speak to you then they'll speak to you as though you are as though you are sunny and you can assume that role you don't need to be concerned about the idea of losing your true nature because once you've seen it you know that that's what it is and still there is this program saying oh you haven't really seen it yet because there was not this aha moment <laughs> <laughs> not this laughing and the background becoming the foreground and i didn't expect something grandiose but something it's quite subtle so, yeah that, it's, that's me, how, it's quite subtle. yeah well that's the that's how you can um sense that it is totally genuine because it's that um there's a in a way there's a sense of um well it's almost embarrassment sometimes that you didn't see the simplicity of it before how did i not see that actually these forms are just arising in impersonal awareness and then i've added the personal aspect to that to make it seem as though it's happening for sunny when it never was but it's like i use the analogy of um you know when you know your mum you don't need to go around asking everybody oh are you my mum because <laughs> you know which one your mum is. <laughs> yes. And it's the same with realisation. Once you've seen that actually you're resting as the infinite impersonal being and then forms arise within that, including the body-mind of Sunny, then those forms are just arising effortlessly and impersonally. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think I have to the test to settle a bit now. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, just really take it easy. But over the next few days, you know, just for a little while, um just give a bit of time now and again, just as a little reminder, because it isn't that you need to practice to get back there. It's just a, a case of noticing that the forms can appear within this open space of effortless awareness, which is impersonal. And um, and once you've seen it a few times, you don't really need to keep reminding yourself because you know that that's what is true. Mm -hmm. And then you begin to realize that the personal realm is optional. And you'll also find that the the stability of impersonal being will find its way into your daily experience because the mind, well, it's already started to settle, but it'll settle more. And then the emotions will settle. And then the physical realm will become, you know, more um, light, really. So it, it will align by, its, by itself? Yes. Okay. Because everything aligns from the infinite being. It's just that while we're entertaining the personal realm, um, we're investing a certain amount of energy and attention in that. So even though our true nature is ever present, if we're using effort to divert our attention into personalization, then to that degree, we're sort of compromising the clarity which is available. But, you know, as you've seen 
the simplicity of effortless awareness, then um, from there, the dualistic realm comes into balance. So the, the mind will settle, the emotions can settle, and the, the physical realm becomes harmonized. still this feeling i can't believe it this can't be that <laughs> <laughs> I, can see, I can see it that these thoughts are coming in yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's great okay well it's uh, it's just a little game we've been playing you know it's a game of distraction because when you are the infinite being all you can do is you know pretend for a little while that you're not you know you can pretend that you're sunny for a while and then it's just for the remembering of, you know, the truth, which is that you never were sunny. Which is quite funny <laughs> when <laughs> I think about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, just take it easy. But just take some, just say, take some moments over the next few days just to allow that clarity and just... Um, you know, before you go to sleep tonight, just spend a few moments just resting there. Mm -hmm. But it, there was that distinct moment. It was quite subtle, but it was just like the separation of, of the personal realm from impersonal being. Yeah, that was the first time that there was a clear or, yeah, a subtle, subtle but clear mm. um feeling of ah oh, there is this and there is that mm 